So this question says a hospital is interested in the average recovery period for patients who have the COVID-19 illness. Identify the term which best defines the following aspects of the study. Let's look at this first part here. It says the set of all persons visiting the doctor's office. So if we are looking at the set of all the persons visiting the doctor's office, everybody visiting the doctor's office here. If we look at all these people who comes to the office, Office, these people would represent the population so I would be the population because we are looking at the set of all the people in the particular environment that we are looking at so the first part would be the population number two patients visiting with patients visiting with COVID-19 so when you look at a patients visiting with COVID-19 that is like a smaller scope that you want to focus on so that would be like what we would call a that's what we would call like a sample frame we have like a list of potential people that we would use okay say we have this potential list of patients with COVID-19 we want to take some people from there and do the study now in this particular question it says that they are interested in the average recovery period for the patients who have the COVID-19 so based on this here we can assume that they are actually taking everyone in the sample frame or everyone who has COVID-19 so the entire sample frame would be taken and those people that they take we can call that the sample okay so in this case the sample frame would be a list of the people who have COVID-19 but we're actually taking information from everyone okay so inside of here we are taking the sample so in this case that's everyone who has COVID so every single person you see with COVID we are trying to figure out what is the average recovery time for them now average goes into the next question it says the mean of the population what represents the mean of the population so when we are talking about the mean of a population or any data that represents the entire population we call that population parameter now when we refer to it for only a sample so in this case the mean of the sample we call that the sample statistic so once we collect from this little sample here we refer to that as the sample statistic now if we were to take for the entire population the recovery time for the entire population that would refer to the population parameter so this question says to create a recreational cricket team a cricket coach must randomly select five players from a group aged 8 to 10 seven players from a group aged 11 to 12 and three players from a group aged 13 to 14 determine the type of sampling that would be best for this situation you must give one reason for your answer now one of the important things that stood out to me was randomly select you are already telling me what kind of method i must implement and that's random sampling so the types of random sampling that we have for this syllabus we have one simple random sampling we have two systematic sampling and three stratified sampling we need to figure out the intention of this recreational team so based on this we have different groups and in each group we must have a certain number of players so the fact that we're selecting randomly is because they are probably trying to give each group representation on the entire recreational team that they're trying to create so therefore if you look at simple random sampling what simple random sampling would do is put all of these cricketers so all the cricketers that they have will put their names in something and would randomly pick them out we would randomly pick them out so because of that we may not get people representing all these groups that we see here okay so we may end up having all the people selected from one particular group which is something that we do not want so we know that's not the case we can't use that now systematic sampling it would give us a list and from that list we select every n term so let's say for instance we had to select every other one so starting from one maybe we selected one then we selected three five and so forth now with this method this does not necessarily guarantee that we would end up getting to pick people that represent each group so for this particular situation i know it's not going to be systematic sampling now stratified sampling we already have groups of people so we have different groups so say this is one group here we have a next group here and we have a next group here so from each group we want a specific amount so five seven and three 
No, since stratified sampling is a random sampling method that allows us to select from strata that already exist. So in this case, the strata or groups that already exist would be the age groups of the cricketers that we have here. So because we can select from that strata, usually you do it based on the proportion of the population. Now with this question, they didn't tell us if these numbers would derive from the proportion however out of all the types of random sampling that we have because we need random sampling in this case stratified sampling is the only one that allows us in this case to select from each age group okay so because of that i would say that the type of sampling needed for this best for this situation or closest to the situation would be stratified random sampling Okay, so we would say the type of sampling, that's the method that we want, stratified random sampling. Now the reason, we have to give one reason. So stratified random sampling is the random sampling process that allows us to randomly select participants from existing groups in order for us to represent the entire population the recreational cricket team would be the entire population in this case so in this case srs would allow us to have representation from all age groups in the cricket team whether this is a junior team or whatever the case is or club we have here we will have some form of representation from each age group and we had to use one of these ones because they said it had to be a randomly selected team if it wasn't going to be a randomly selected team then we could potentially use in the quota system but that would be non-random okay so because we had to randomly select we had to use a strategy a method that allows us to use random selection so it says the following information shows 31 car prices for a certain company now we have all these values here and the first thing we need to do is draw a box and whisker plot to illustrate the data now a box and whisker plot we have on that a few key elements we have the lowest value the highest value here would give us the lower quartile here would give us the upper quartile and the most important one is a median so these are the important elements that we need in order to draw a box and whisker plot so for now i could say we have our lowest value our lowest value here is 253 and our highest value is 986 so we have this already as well as this which represents our lowest and highest values now we need to identify the lower quartile median and the upper quartile in order to determine the lower quartile the median and the upper quartile we need to arrange all these numbers in order of highest to lowest as you can see they are already in order of highest to lowest so now we can walk towards figuring out where these values are so we could use little calculations to help us so the median is usually written as the n plus 1 divided by 2 term okay so in this case we have total 1 so total 1 plus 1 is 32 divided by 2 which is 16 so the 16 term would be the median and when we're talking about the median this would be organized from lowest to highest so this is the first second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so this represents the median the five five four so five five four is a median so let me line these out for you so you could see um what they look like and we could organize them from lowest to highest so i have the numbers here listed out and we know that the middle number is right here so how i usually do this i usually go like this so this section here now as well as this section here now we're literally splitting it in half now i need to figure out what is the middle number here so this can go bam this is gone this is gone this is gone 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 so on each side i'll cross out seven so cross out seven here as well as here so you know that this number here 520 happens to be my lower quartile i'm gonna guess that 682 is my lower quartile so if you cancel these out one on each side two on each side three on each side four on each side 
five on each side, six on each side, seven on each side, my upper quartile is 682. Okay, so now I know that here is 520 and here is 682. So then now I have to plot all of these. So I have all my key things, my lower quartile, my median, my upper quartile. I have my highest value and I also have my lowest value. So now I can draw a box and with a plot. Now, one thing I like to do when drawing this is try to almost draw it to some extent close to scale if you can. So in essence, if you're starting from 253, it's just say we have 253 here and i was uh, spread it kind of evenly groups of fifties starting from say 200 so it could say 200 it could be 250 obviously on a paper would use a ruler to do this 350 4 400 but for the purpose of this video i'll try to do it as evenly as possible by eyeing it out we already have our sketch here of what it was gonna look like we're just putting it so we can be putting it in a way that we can also represented it to some form of a scale we want to show that we understand that the box and whisker plot can be represented in a way that shows the skewness if we need to figure that out and the spread can be represented through the illustration okay so we are looking for 253 253 would be 253 would probably fall somewhere right here roughly so this is the lower end of the whisker so this represents 253 then our highest value is 986 so this is 950 975 would be somewhere around here so 986 would be somewhere around here okay so 986 okay, so we have this and we also have this so let's look for the median so the median is at 554 so somewhere right here 554 just by 550 so let's just go on the edge of 550 so we could see that this can be our median this here is a 554 our next one is 520 so we have 500 here and relative to this 550 we have 520 so 525 would be halfway so 520 would be just about here just before that halfway mark there this is a 520 so this should be 682 i didn't realize i left it here but we have it here as 682 here right this here is 682 so as you can see we have all of these here written yeah so we have a 682 just a correction from what we've written here but this is why it should be a 682 so then now we look for the 682 so we have 650 halfway between this would be 675 so we pass just about halfway between here to get to the 682 so we expect to see it right here just about there so this is 682 so we could start connecting our box and whisker all right so based on this you can see that this is how it would look this is how it would look this here would represent the lowest value right here would be our lower quartile right here would be our median here would be our upper quartile and here would be our highest value so this here is our box and whisker plot and looking at this i could see that it's positively skewed so anyways, continuing, determine the prices that will be classified as expensive. Considering that a car is expensive if its price is more than 1.5 times. So more than 1.5 times the interquartile range. So expensive would mean that we are more than 1.5 times the interquartile range. So basically what we're looking for here are what we call outliers towards this side to the higher end so let's work out the interquartile range so the interquartile range as it suggests is interquartile meaning we are finding the highest difference that we could find between the quartiles so in this case it would be upper quartile minus the lower quartile so the upper quartile we have here 682 so 682 minus 520 plus 520 is the lower quartile so therefore we could say 682 take away 520 is 162 so they didn't tell us if this was in dollars ten thousand dollars or whatever the case is let's just say this is 162 dollars right now we're looking at 1.5 times the iqr so in order to figure that out we just multiply that by 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by 162 would give us 243 so 243 so anything that's more than 243 but from where relative to where that's the important thing we need to figure out relative to where 
So if we read in the question now, continue, it says 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile. So anything that expensive, which is more than 1.5 times the IQR above upper quartile. So let's work out what that would be. So the upper quartile we said is 682. So the upper quartile is 682. And then we have to find the outlier beyond this point. So that's going to be 682 plus the 243. Anything that's going to be beyond this value that we calculate here, we're going to have to call it expensive. So 682 plus 243, this is going to give us 925. Okay, so expensive stuff will be above $925. So this basically represents the outliers on the right side of the data, meaning over on this section. Okay, so we're looking at this upper echelon that we have here now if you look at this there are only two values that fall above that which would be 957 and 986 so these two values represent the prices that would be classified as expensive 957 and 986 are classified as expensive and that's because they are above 1.5 times the upper quarter all right so this here would be our answer for part two so now we need to state one disadvantage of using a box and whisker plot rather than a stem and leaf diagram to represent the data so basically a stem and leaf diagram if we use a stem and leaf diagram we would have been able to preserve all these values here so all of these values would have been still shown on the data whereas with the box and whisker plot if you notice we only have five important values so the stem and leaf diagram allows us to see every single value that you see here whereas this box and whisker plot would have restricted us from seeing all the values here so i'm going to use this as an example so you could see what i'm talking about so this here is a stem and leaf diagram and we have a box plot here so as you can see we have all the values in the stem and leaf diagram we we can find individual numbers so we can find the lowest value here so in this case it's 40 so if you look here we have 40 four zero we also have the highest one which is 72 you can find that here but also you would see all the individual numbers that lie in between the data whereas in this particular case here we won't see all those values so the box plot kind of restricts us from seeing every single value so therefore one advantage of using a box and whisker plot rather Rather than a stem and leaf diagram to represent the data, the disadvantage is box and whisker plot hides the exact values and intricate details of data. All right, so this is how we answer these questions here. So for this particular question, it says a fitness trainer noted the time spent on a certain exercise equipment in eight days. The results were as follows. So the first thing we have to do is complete the cumulative frequency row on the table. Cumulative frequency just means that we are adding these values as they accumulate. So for instance, in the first one, we have four. Then for this one, we will have four plus seven, which would give us 11. Now for this one here, we would have four plus seven plus 24 so in essence all we're doing is continuing this so 11 plus 24 would give us 35 then 35 plus 38 would give us 73 so 35 plus 38 gives us 73 then 73 plus 7 gives us 80 so these are the values that we needed for this and we have them already now we need to plot this on our graph so whenever we plot cumulative frequency charts we plot them on the upper boundaries so in this case as you can see the numbers here are overlapping so that means these represents the boundaries for these particular values so in this case when we start at zero we would have been zero so zero would have been zero so let's put this as the cumulative frequency and over here we would have had the time in minutes a time in minutes but this would represent our boundaries okay so the first boundary that we would have had here is 15 because remember that's a point where they overlap okay so because they cut out 15 here 30 45 60 these are our boundaries so 15 covers 4 30 covers 11 45 covers 35 60 covers 73 and then when we hit our last value 75 which will be our last boundary 
we hit that 80 so i'm gonna take these values now and try to plot them on my graph so let's try to scale these off now so we have a time in minutes this would go on my x-axis and this cumulative frequency would go on my y-axis so x-axis we're going from 0 15 30 45 60 75 so since they're in groups of 15 i'll let each one of these represent five so let's start from here so i'm gonna say that this is zero so this would be like five ten 15 so here's 15 then every three would represent one of these so 15 1 2 3 here would be 30 1 2 3 here would be 45 here would be 1 2 3 here's 60 1 2 3 here would be 75 all right so now 80 you can say going up in tens so here would be 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 so i'm just making sure that i can match that so that's 10 20 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. All right, so this here represents our cumulative frequency and here represents our time in minute time in minutes okay so the first point we have is zero zero so we're right here zero zero then we have 15 minutes to four so this goes 15 then we go up one two three four so we would be right here because remember each one of these represent one going up this way so then the next one 30 goes to 11 so this is 10 we go up one this here is 11 then the next one is 45 45 goes to 35 so this is 30 35 goes here so 45 matches here so this is where they intersect 60 goes to 73 so we have 50 60 we have 70 here one two three so right here is 73 then the last one 75 goes to 80 so 75 goes all the way up to 80 okay so we can connect these areas now try to do curve with them all right so then we try to get as smooth as possible all right so we have our curve now and this represents our cumulative frequency of the time spent on exercising equipment or machine so on the actual paper you use it on the exam this here represents one centimeter so between here to here so 5 10 15 so on the x-axis one centimeter represents five minutes on the y-axis one centimeter so from here to here one centimeter represents five people okay so we have our scale we have our axes label we have our cumulative frequency curve so let's see what we have to do next so the next part it says use the cumulative frequency curve to determine the number of days that less than 50 minutes was spent on a certain exercise equipment so the number of days that less than 50 minutes was spent on a certain exercise equipment so we look for 50 minutes so this is 45 50 55 60 so this is 50 here right here is 50 minutes so then i have to go up here straight up here Bam. when i come across here to hit somewhere around here so that's about like 47 right here is like 47 for me so based on this i can say it took if it we the number of days it took less than 57 minutes then 50 minutes the number of days it took less than 50 minutes would be about 47 days okay so 47 days remember this cumulative frequency here represents the number of days okay so answer for this would be 47 days